Yes, 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 Kenyans. Tamu sana. I always say, Tamu sana. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. Welcome, welcome. Recently, we saw Raila Amolo Odinga and our president, Uhuru Kenyatta, doing some strolls in the city, inspecting some projects. Later that day, we saw Raila Amolo Odinga giving some press statement hmm, in front of one Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. And from the voice itself, you could see that this was a sick Raila Amolo Odinga. The voice was hoarse and was not the usual soft voice of Raila Amolo Odinga. This just tells you, ladies and gentlemen, that something was so urgent and something had to be done first to a point of removing a sick Raila Amolo Odinga from the house to be seen with the president in public. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. And you know we are in a game of politics and things are always not as they seem to appear. There is always some hidden hand driving things the way they are going. So actually I want us today to look outside of the box to see exactly what was so urgent that Asik Raila Amolo Odinga had to be taken out from the house so that he could be seen with the president in public. This is what I want us to look into today. And before we look into it today, you know, some secrets are kept, some things are always kept secret. And for us as people who try to analyze and know what might have happened, we are just speculating. And for you to accurately speculate, you must start from the known. Because even in mathematics we are told 5 plus y equals to 10. For you to get y, you must start from the known in order to get the unknown. So I want us to look at the known factors so that we know exactly what was so urgent to a point of removing a sick Raila Amolo Odinga from the house to be seen with the president in public. That's what I want us to discuss today. And in this channel, we don't massage anybody's ego here. Hmm? Truth is only one. There is no neutral truth. We call a spade a spade as it is. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go back, let's go straight away to the known facts. And then we shall know exactly what prompted the president to call Raila twice on Tuesday and then once on Wednesday morning, after which we saw them strolling the city. The first thing we must all agree, and this is not debatable, is that Raila Amolo Odinga, outside of the five big communities we have in Kenya, it's only Raila Amolo Odinga who commands a big chunk of these other small, small communities. It's only Raila Amolo Odinga who has a big chunk of support outside of this, from these smaller communities. And that has been proved, he has proved that three times. He proved that in 2017, he proved that in 2013, and he proved that in 2007. Anybody arguing contrary to that should just prove himself through the ballot. So it's a given fact that outside of the five communities, it's only Raila who has a sizable support among these smaller communities. I'm trying to bring that point so that you can actually see, because we, what we know, ladies and gentlemen, and the late, the late Vice President Kijana Wamalwa made it clear some years back, that we have Raila phobia, and Raila maniacs, that people who love Raila love him to the core. And when Raila speaks, they listen. In fact, Raila is the only politician who, are, who has what I can call loyal supporters in Kenya today. When he says something, the people will listen. So ladies and gentlemen, before the president made the call, 
there were so many things going around in the country. In fact, ANC party was even daring Raila Amolo Odinga to quit the hardship. Mm? And even ODM members of parliament and leaders were also even hinting of quitting the hardship. So it simply means there was a rebellion that was growing among Raila supporters. Raila supporters, in one way or the other, were feeling as if the president was betraying their man. That was the feeling, and, may, and also Professor Herman Manyora hinted on the same some times back when he was being interviewed in one of the TV stations. He, he said clearly that if the president, Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta, is the one receiving daily briefings, then he cannot betray Raila Amolo Odinga. So maybe, and I say maybe, Uhuru wanted to test the ground. Maybe he wanted to replace Raila Amolo Odinga with one Kenya alliance. Maybe he was trying to do an experiment. Then, as he was doing the experiment, maybe his intelligence sources told him, wait, Mr. President, you are crossing the red tape. Because, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before even Raila became sick, already there was some kind of statement that was just creating a perception that Uhuru was betraying Raila Amolo Odinga. Then Raila became sick, and then we could see one Kenya alliance now mobilizing themselves very strongly and even daring Raila to quit the handshake. So Uhuru, in one way or the other, wanted to test the ground. And maybe what he was told was that he was crossing the red tape. Because in Kenya today, this is also a fact. We have two politicians, two top politicians here today. We have William Ruto and we have Raila. I've always maintained in this channel that William Ruto does not have much support. But he has what is called a perception support. William Ruto can create a perception of something that is not even there. Look, for instance, the way he has created a perception of the hustler movement. Hmm? He has made Kenyans believe that he has a lot of support among the hustlers. Though that has also been demystified in the, just re re in the recently concluded by election. So, leaving Raila, uh, betraying Raila, and also betraying Ruto at the same time, maybe was too lethal for the president. And maybe his one Kenya alliance could not handle any rebellion that was going to emanate out of betraying the two politicians. So he was maybe told, hey, Mr. President, you are closing the red line. We all know, ladies and gentlemen, that as of today, Kenyans are suffering economically. Mm? The status of Kenyan pocket is so bad, and any slight of a rebellion can be very lethal to the government. And a rebellion was already creeping in. Mm? A rebellion was already creeping in, and you can bear me witness, folks, that currently Uhuru Megai Kenyatta has got a lot of goodwill among or from Kenyans. But you can also bear me witness, as the talk of betraying Raila was growing louder, this goodwill was slowly disappearing. And it was just a matter of time before Uhuru Kenyatta knew that power is not actually permanent. So it might have been advised to make peace with Raila Amolo Odinga. I think that that might be the advice he was given. Because we, we all know, folks, ladies and gentlemen, that one Kenya alliance, the only person who maybe has a small, a small block of voices, maybe only Kalonzo, the rest have nothing. <laughs> so relying on those people, or rather attempting to replace Raila Amolo Odinga with this group, this cabal with no support on the ground, could not work. 
So Uhuru might have rescinded his decision. Maybe if he was trying to test the ground, he saw it was, very, it was going to explode. And it was just a matter of time. So actually, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have much today. If you've burnt on this video for the very first time, or rather in this channel for the very first time, kindly subscribe and also give this video a like. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Thank you.